Greetings glass fusers. In this video I'm going to show you how I created a shadowed box display for my painted glass piece. Here are the supplies. Alrighty, to get started I needed to pick a shadow box that would complement the size of my piece. Uh, I was going in between a smaller size and a larger one. I went with the 11 by 17 so there would be some breathing room, some space around my piece which will lend to a much more lighter feel. In the end if I kept him really compact in this smaller piece he'd be very small and kind of more of a window view and making it larger I think gave a better presentation for this design. So I chose the larger size and I took out the backing piece for the shadow box um, because I'm going to decorate it. I wanted a lighter background since my piece is a lot of translucent glass um, and I want to make sure that the colors that I painted on there are going to be nice and bright and so having a light background, in this case a white background, which I'm going to paint over top of my texture, uh, is going to make my piece look a lot better. So I first just glued uh, some torn up pieces of paper, which is this crepe paper stuff that we get sometimes in our glass orders. I glued down all the pieces and then painted a coat of white all over. I just used regular Elmer's glue and acrylic white paint. And once the acrylic paint was dry, I used a gold paint marker to just very very lightly decorate the trim, so just the edges where each of these little textured pieces meet. I lightly brushed the paint pen, giving a very delicate accent of gold. Before you start any kind of drilling, make sure to get your hardware that you're going to use. I purchased some hex head cap screws and I got four of them that will be my uh, attaching pieces for the glass and that's what I'm going to drill the holes to be so they're a quarter inch so I will be needing a quarter inch hole for the screws to go into and I got four of the same size quarter inch hex nuts that will secure at the very back of my piece. And then as spacers, because the top of the hex screw is larger than the threaded part, I needed some larger hex nuts to use as my spacers. So I got eight of the 5 sixteenths of an inch hex nuts, and that's enough for each screw times two, since I need spacers between each layer of my glass. I took a lot of time making sure to choose the right sizes that would balance out the rest of my piece. I chose the size screws and nuts that I did because I knew it would complement the size of my piece and would be well balanced. Make sure you're choosing hardware that's not going to overwhelm your design or you don't want to get something that's too small and won't be able to hold up or handle the weight of your piece if it's going to be load bearing. Now before I started drilling, I wanted to make sure I was going to place the holes in fairly even spacing uh, from the edge of the glass. So I traced the border of my piece on some scrap paper and used a ruler just to plot out where the screws would be, just measuring, uh, I think it was like half an inch in from each side, from each edge, and where the crosshairs matched, that's where the screws went. And I just marked on the glass the little crosshatch point where I would need to drill. Now for your drill bits you'll need to get more than a single size. I did try drilling uh, my first hole with just the six millimeter size diamond drill bit, uh, but it went very very slowly and it was definitely wearing down the bit a lot more quickly than when I next did this more step up method where I first drilled with a smaller diameter drill bit. I started with a two millimeter, drilled all my holes, and then 
went a next step up, used a three millimeter drill bit, drilled through all those holes again, and again stepped up another one and another until I got to the six millimeter size that I needed to match my bolts that I'm using. Make sure to drill uh, practice holes using your final size drill bit. Uh, all the drill bits can look very, very similar. And if you're not sure what size it is, it's best to just make a little test and check that your bolt fits, whatever hardware you're using. I did on my first hole make a slightly too large uh, of a choice. I went with the eight millimeter by accident but uh, for this project it ended up not mattering, but just make sure you're using the right drill bit. Now once I drilled my first set of holes in my first piece, I actually taped the two pieces together because I wanted to make sure that the holes would align later on when I'm assembling everything together. If it was off at all, then the pieces wouldn't line up properly. So I taped the two pieces of glass together just with some painter's tape really well um, in the position that I wanted them to be sitting once they're all assembled together. So then I actually drilled uh, the holes in the second piece through the holes in the first piece to use those as my little guide or jig. All right, if you're not exhausted by all the drilling you've already done, you'll be excited to do a little more. And First, I just positioned my two pieces of glass uh, as centered as I could in my frame. I did use a ruler and measured to try and make sure that I had an even amount of space from the edge of the glass to each side, on all sides, before marking where my drill holes lined up with on the background, and I just marked it with a little pencil there with a little X. And then I just took a normal drill and drill bit and drilled through those little X's. Start with a smaller bit and work your way up and just double check to make sure that your hardware is gonna fit snugly. I started with a bit which was almost exactly the same size, or it was a quarter, a quarter inch bit, but it was actually a little bit too small for sliding the my hardware hex nuts or screws all the way through so I had to go a little bit larger but better to start small and make it larger because you won't have an easy time making it smaller. And then it was just assembly from there placing my hex nuts on the table and then sliding my first piece of glass with the line drawing on, on it and then some spacers then my other piece of glass and another set of spacers and then I just placed my frame on top of that uh, face down and then secured it at the back with the smaller hex nuts. The nice thing about choosing the shadow box for this project is it has this little spacer on the edge, on the inside edge, and that's where I secured my twinkle lights. And I just used a temporary solution right for now is some clear tape just so I could plot out where I wanted them all. So far, it's just hanging on with the clear tape. Later, I might secure it with some glue, but uh, this was just working so I could see what it would look like. And then to secure the battery at the back, I just used some Velcro. I thought that would be easier than gluing the entire thing and having to try and remove it later on uh, should I need to adjust the lighting or replace it. And then here's just a shot of the, at the back. I used some fishing line to make a little loop across the two top bolts that are poking out, and that's my little hanger for my piece. And I secured that with a little silicone glue on the knots that I made just for extra security. And here we are all assembled. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the studio.